Primera, good morning. Today, as you know, we have the great <coughs> blessing, the huge blessing, and the honor and the opportunity to have with us Mr. Uh, Steve Christoforou, and his name is Stylianos, Stiliano Christoforou, Stiliane, welcome to our parish. We are so thankful to you. And uh, I think now the most beneficial thing is uh, to leave space for this wonderful and very pious young man to deliver the sermon. Thank you so much, our beloved Stiliane. I mean, the election of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. What is salvation worth? And is it a price that we're willing to pay? I ask this because in today's gospel reading, we hear about a man who is living a waking nightmare. We hear about a man who is living in hell. A man who was possessed by demons, a man who was living like a wild animal, a subhuman existence, off in the corners, chained in shackles, living amongst the tombs, naked. Again, a subhuman, animalistic existence. And this from a child of God. This from somebody who is made in the image and likeness of Christ. What indignity. What pain. And yet there he was by himself, ignored, chained on the sides, forgotten until Christ sees him. Christ sees him, and he heals him, and he brings him back to his right mind. He makes him human again. And we fast forward a little bit, of course, and we see him fully clothed in his right man, right mind, seated at the feet of Christ. He'd gone from an animal to a disciple. He'd gone from somebody who was living amongst the tombs, overcome by the demons, overcome by death, to somebody who was sitting at the right hand of life. But it didn't happen for free. There was a cost to this, right? Because when Christ goes and he dismisses the demons from this man, they go somewhere. They go into the pigs. And the pigs end up being cast into the water. And this is what people see. This is what people talk about. Because word travels fast when Christ does this miracle. Word travels fast. But word doesn't travel fast that a man has been redeemed. Word doesn't travel fast that a man has been saved. Word doesn't travel fast that a man has been rescued from the demons. Word travels fast that our pigs have been sacrificed. And all of these people come together, and they see this man sitting at the right hand of Christ, and they're afraid because Christ has taken their pigs, and they wonder, what else is he going to take from us down the line? To those people, the salvation of the man wasn't worth the loss of those pigs. And I wonder for us, when we see people who are in a position of distress, when we see people who are in a position of loneliness, when we see people on the margins, like this man was, are we willing to pay the price? Or are we holding on to our pigs, like those people were? Do we rejoice or do we hold on? I think it's interesting that St. Paul, in today's epistle reading, contrasts this with beautiful teachings about generosity. He tells us that if we're cheap when we sow, we're not going to get a lot when we reap. But if we sow with abundance, we will receive and reap with abundance. If we give, in other words, blessings will come to us. But the question is for us, are we going to be cheerful givers who invest? Are we going to be cheerful givers who are willing to have open hands to let go? Or are we going to be stingy? Would we rather hold on to our pigs? And what does this mean for us? I mean, we can talk about sort of very abstract things. But make it personal for each and every one of us. What are the pigs that we are holding on to in our lives, and what are the ways that we are unwilling to invest in the salvation of the people around us? For example, simple example, if you're a student and you see somebody sitting by themselves in the cafeteria, are you willing to go and sit by that person? Are you willing to rescue that person from the loneliness that they have on the margins of the cafeteria, or are you too worried about the way people will see you as well? Are you willing to do what you need to do for the salvation of that person, or are you too attached to your pigs? If you see somebody who is being teased and bullied and mistreated, are you going to stand up to defend that person? Or are you going to join in that because you'd rather be seen as part of the cool kids? Are you going to do something for the salvation of that person, 
or are you too attached to your pigs? If you're a parent, you can think about this in your own life as well. When there's church on a Sunday morning or a retreat on a Saturday afternoon, when the salvation of your children are at stake, are you willing to take them to the right hand of Christ? Or are you much more likely to take them to their sports or their extracurriculars or whatever it might be? Do you seek the salvation of your children or are you still too attached to those pigs? Paul tells us to give abundantly. Paul tells us that if we sow with abundance, we will reap with abundance. Paul tells us that if we open up our hearts and our hands, the Lord will fill our lives with grace and fill his lives with abundance. But it starts with the choices that we make. Those people who saw that man who was liberated were afraid when they saw those blessings. They were afraid because of what it cost. They saw a man healed, and they weren't willing to pay the price. How often in our own lives do we see the road to salvation laid out in front of us, but the cost scares us? And it's fine. It's fine to be afraid. It's fine to hold on a little bit, but we have to be honest with ourselves. What are the ways in our own lives, in this very moment, that we see the path of salvation open for us, but we're just too attached to those pigs? May God give us the grace to let go. May God give us the, the grace to open up our hands so we can give abundantly, so we can all receive abundantly of God's rich mercy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.